This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. Let us discuss the nuclear division strategies when we are in with a smaller rexus. There's always a risk of tearing the rexus during lateral separation maneuvers, especially while dealing with denser nucleus. In the ideal world, of course, a rexus of 5.5 mm would be good enough to deal with division of nucleus of most hardness or most grades. But in situations wherein we have a smaller rexus, like in these two cases with intermittent lenses, let us to find out the right strategy to divide the nucleus wherein we won't induce stress on the capsular margins. So let's begin with the first case now. This is an 80-year-old elderly man and uh, he has this intermittent cataract. The capsule is stained. I'm using cohesive OVD. A sodium hyaluronate 3% in this patient. Of course, these air bubbles are quite irritating. Nevertheless, I need to just ignore it and proceed with my surgery. So since it was an intumescent lens, I am avoiding making a very a big rexus. So I am conscious that I don't want to lose the rexus. In that event, my rexus is slightly lesser than what I would have personally liked. It's around 4.5 millimeter to 4.75, I think. Uh, but that should be fine. Let's see what precautions do we take when trying to deal with these chopping maneuvers here. The epinucleus and the cortex are aspirated initially out and then I'm using a chopper which has got a sharp tip and an inside cutting edge. It's a routine chopper. Uh, it's at 90 degrees. The length of the tip is 1.25 millimeter. At the look of it, the cata doesn't look to be dense. It looks to be soft. So I shouldn't be having much of an issue here. So I bury my phaco tip using longitudinal phaco energy. Chopper is placed in front of it. It goes down and then laterally separates. At lateral separation, you can see that at no point the chopper is tugging at the margin of the rexus. So it goes down. The lateral separation movement just stops short of the chopper touching the rexus margin. So this fact I'm conscious. And I don't have to go down multiple times because the nucleus is very brittle and easy crack. The point to note here is during lateral separation, I avoid bringing the chopper very much lateral anywhere near the vicinity of the rexus margin. This is the key. The nucleus has been divided into multiple fragments and each of the fragments has been emulsified. And please note the position of my tip here. This is the typical position I would like to keep when I'm trying to aspirate out the fragments. It is tilted towards my left side and the it gives more surface area exposure for the nucleus to attach itself. And I feel uh, we are efficiently using the ultrasound energy and also we can achieve better occlusion with this orientation of the tip. So in just a matter of couple of minutes, the entire nucleus is emulsified and aspirated out. The small fiber was stuck in the side port which also is removed. A little bit of cortex is remaining. The capsule is flushed with BSS just to separate these fibers which, which are clinging onto the posterior capsule and then time to remove the cortex. So using bimanual irrigation aspiration, the cortex is aspirated out following which the capsular bag is formed with viscoelastic and then intraocular lens is placed into the bag. Uh, moving on to the next case. Uh, this is a 65-year-old gentleman who has had a stroke and is having hemiplegia. So the cataract is quite long-lasting and it's delayed. I'm expecting a slightly denser nucleus beneath the swollen cortex. The surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. The patient was slightly not cooperative. After making the side port incisions and staining of the anticapsule, viscoelastic is injected into the eye. Again, I'm using a cohesive high-density viscoelastic sodium hyaluronate 3%.
the rexus is initiated with the forceps itself and then uh, rexus is continued the pupil itself is not very well dilated and i think i have a rexus which is around 4 to 4.5 mm because i'm expecting a slightly denser nucleus dividing this nucleus is going to be challenge with this size of a rexus the other easier option always would be to decompress the bag and enlarge the rexus now itself and then proceed but if we would want to continue phacoemulsifying with this size rexus let us see what precautions uh, we need to take the phaco probe is introduced into the eye and usually the superficial epinucleus is first aspirated out and then in most of the denser nucleus i can see that the underlying nucleus is a slight reddish brown tinge to it so expecting a denser nucleus since such eyes my strategy always used to first trench a little bit get into a deeper plane and then proceed with the vertical chop here again the chopper which i'm using is a similar chopper it's a sharp chopper with a sharp tip and an inside cutting edge it's 1.25 mm in depth the chopper is used to stabilize the nucleus as i'm doing some initial trenching using only torsional ultrasound you can see i'm using 90% ultrasound energy here I'm trying to go in at least 70% depth so that i can get a firm grip on the central core of the nucleus setting such change to longitudinal energy and the chopping is begun please keep a note at the position of my the chopper as it is moving you can see the nucleus is definitely harder compared to the previous nucleus and one vertical chop is not going to separate it so as i am laterally separating the chopper is coming and touching the rexus margin and this i am noting it here so let us see how i modify my technique here the chopper goes down and i am trying to be as gentle as possible the chopper is being placed at progressively deeper planes and trying to separate those leathery fibers in the initial 2 3 chops we can see that the posterior plate is still not cracked that's fine no problem at all once i get a good grip the important point is you can see the chopper is being progressively placed at a deeper plane it goes down rather than pulling laterally so the important maneuver here would be to keep on going and placing the chopper vertically down in the more posterior plane rather than uh, using excessive force to laterally separate so if the chopper is placed much more posteriorly you don't have to exert lot of force to separate the fragments or to break the posterior plate it's important that the chopper has to be kept at progressively deeper planes and then a little bit of a lateral separation maneuver is good enough so in the initial part the posterior plate was not cracking but progressively as we continue with chopping we can see that without inducing much stress on the uh, rexus margin we could achieve a successful division of all the fragments including the division of the posterior plate so i've got six small fragments which are free and uh, this all could be achieved basically because the, the chopper was placed at subsequently deeper planes we don't get the crack at a single moment at all so that's the reason we shouldn't keep on struggling by extending the chopper laterally rather than going it deeper and then separating once the fragments are divided uh, it's going to be child play for us to uh, remove these uh, fragments again because the rexus is smaller we also get an idea like what is a plane at which you are emulsifying so in this case you can see that the fragment is dancing around near the vicinity of the capsular bag itself so that reassures me that plane of emulsification is not anterior so the the challenge here really is not the fragment emulsification the challenge is usually how we divide when we're dealing with a smaller rexus viscoelastic is replaced into the eye and then the remaining fragments emulsification is continued
the posture capsule is flushed with a little bit of BSS to clear off the lens fibers which is sticking onto it. The cortex aspiration is done and the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. After placing the intraocular lens, I thought I would like to enlarge the rectus margin and I'm again using a micro scissors and forceps, the rectus is enlarged on both the sides. So eventually we have a decent sized rectus, should not be an issue. So to conclude, whenever we are in a situation where we are forced to do emulsification in a slightly smaller rexus, the key is during lateral separation, you need to minimize the extent of movement to which the chopper is being pulled laterally. Uh, the secret to achieve good cracks in even a denser nucleus is to keep on chopping at different planes, that is the chopper is being placed at progressively deeper planes. Once you do that, you don't have to use excess lateral force to separate that. So we need to be conscious of these two factors that are not to use excess lateral force rather than that placing the chopper much more in a deeper plane and doing it at multiple attempts is going to yield us uh, very good results. Thank you so much for watching and hope you found this helpful.